welcome. This is the first foundation video to setting up an accounting system in QuickBooks Online for real estate agents. I am your host, Robert Pipus, with Eagle Eye Bookkeeping Services. I thank you for attending today. If you haven't watched the introduction video yet, please do so now. It lays out the importance as real estate agents to have a financial system in place so that you can produce financial reports that will enable you to monitor all the other functions or departments of your business. And with that monitoring system, you can then have the information or tools to make the best decisions for you and your business. The introduction video also lays out the outline of the course. To get started, the general purpose of financial statements is to provide information about the results of the operations, the financial position, and cash flows of an organization. Then we can take this information and use it to make decisions as to how to allocate resources, whether or not it's time or money resources. Time or money resources are both limited. The three main financial statements are the profit and loss, or P&L. This statement shows you the sales or revenue and expenses of a particular time frame or range of time. The second financial statement is the balance sheet. The balance sheet shows you a snapshot of your company at any given time. It shows things like what you own, what you owe, and what your net worth is. The balance sheet is a powerful tool when analyzed over time. By looking at certain ratios and calculations, you can spot issues before they become problems. The statement of cash flows is another powerful tool. It shows a summary in a given range of time as to where the cash flow of your business is coming from. Throughout not only the setup process, but also ongoing and maintaining this accounting system, the end result of any good accounting system is to ensure that the financial statements are not only a fair and accurate representation of the business activities, but also a useful tool that can be used to make the best decisions for your business. In this first lesson, we will go over setting up the chart of accounts in QuickBooks Online. But first, I will give you a brief description of what they are and the different components to them. The chart of accounts are buckets that information we enter into QuickBooks Online feeds into. When we enter information into an invoice, that information gets directed to various accounts. These accounts are the chart of accounts. There are two types of accounts. There are parent accounts and there are sub accounts to the parent accounts. This is a very important concept to understand when we're developing the chart of accounts and when we're entering the chart of accounts into QuickBooks Online. To give an example of this relationship, on the profit and loss statement, we're going to create a parent account for residential revenue. That's the one highlighted in yellow up top here. And then under it, we're going to create multiple sub accounts. We'll have a sales revenue sub account, a listing revenue, a leasing revenue, and a property management revenue account that will feed into the parent account of residential revenue. To give a quick glimpse into the revenue section, we will also have the same sub accounts for commercial sales. Right below that, you'll see the commercial sale, commercial revenue highlighted in yellow, and then the sales, listing revenue, leasing revenue, and property management revenue that are associated with commercial property sales. For the chart of accounts, we will be adding parent accounts and sub accounts that will end up being the structure of the balance sheet and the P&L. We will start with going over the chart of accounts on the P&L, and then we will go over the chart of accounts on the balance sheet. And finally, we will go into QuickBooks Online and demonstrate how to upload and set them up. So starting with the profit and loss. There are three sections to the profit and loss statement. The first is revenue, the second is cost of sales, and the third is expenses. On the revenue side, this is where all your sales are going to go. On the cost of sales, these are going to be the direct costs incurred with producing the sales, such as the signs that you purchase for your listing, listings in order to get them sold. For the expenses, this is all the other expenses that you have that are associated with running the business as a whole such as web hosting fees if you have those. And of course, revenue minus cost of sales equals gross profit, and gross profit minus expenses equals net income. As you will see in the illustration of the balance sheet later on, 
net income or your net sales will appear on the balance sheet. So to go over the structure of your P&L or your profit and loss statement, like we said before, we're going to have three sections which are highlighted in green, which are revenues, cost of sales, and expenses. And under that, we're going to have parent accounts. All the parent, parent accounts are highlighted in yellow. So under the revenues, we're going to have three parent account setups. Revenue, one for commercial, and one for other real estate revenue. And under the revenue, like I said before, we have sales, listing, leasing, and property management revenue, all that are associated with residential property. And then underneath the commercial one, we have the same sub-accountants, but they're for commercial properties. The other real estate revenue section has two sub-accounts in it, one for interest revenue and one for other revenue. Examples of what you can put in the other revenue is, let's say, for example, you were approached by a homeowner that wanted you to do a CMA on their property. They weren't necessarily interested in listing it at the moment, but they just wanted that comparative market analysis done for them. And let's say that you want to charge them, you know, 100 or 200 dollars just to, you know, for your time to put together that cost or that comparative market analysis for them. Uh, that's where this type of revenue would go. The cost of sales expense parent account or is going to have sub accounts underneath them for commission expense, royalty expense, the listing cost expenses, cost of sales expenses, the buyer's cost of sales expenses. Um, other commissions and other costs. When we get down into the expenses section, some of this will be more pertinent to other real estate agents. It just depends on the size of your operation. It depends if you, you know, some real estate agents that I know have assistants that they brought on board and they actually pay them a wage. So that's why there's a salary and wage expense. I would say that 80%, at least maybe 90% of the real estates that I encounter are a one person operation. So they don't, they don't have a need for this section, but that 10% of real estate agents that do have assistance or, you know, other, other staff on board that they pay, the salaries and wage expense would be the category to put in the sub accounts for salaries and wages, payroll taxes, insurance, and other employee benefits. Uh, the next parent account is lead generation expense. This is where you're going to put in your advertising expenses, your print and direct mail expense, or your internet lead generation expenses. You know, the next section has to do with, you know, desk fees or rent, utility expenses, repairs and maintenance on the building if you have it, insurance expense on the property if you have it. And then communication technology expenses where you're going to put your telephone, your internet, your website, or other communication and technology expenses that you may have that don't fall into the other three categories. Education and dues expense. You know, as real estate agents, you have continuing education requirements in order to maintain your license. Dues and subscriptions are for any publications that you may buy into to evaluate the market surrounding you. Insurance expense. This is where your automobile expense would go. For the agents that don't have their brokers pay for the E&O insurance, the errors and omissions insurance would go into this category. Property and liability insurance would also fall under that. Professional services expense parent account. This is where your accounting and tax preparation fees will go, your legal or any other professional fees that you may have would fall under that one. And then you have an other expenses. This is where your meals and entertainment, your travel, your office supplies, your lodging, charitable donations, or other expenses. And of course, you got depreciation there on the bottom. So this is what your profit and loss statement will look like on a very high level. I created an Excel because it's easier to follow and easier to highlight which ones are the parent accounts and which ones are the sub accounts. So now that we have explained the profit and loss statement, we'll move on to the balance sheet. And just like the profit and loss statement, the balance sheet has three different sections to it. They're just different sections. The first section is assets, then liabilities, and then equity. The accounting equation states that assets always equal liabilities plus equity. 
There are a few auto accounts in QuickBooks Online. I bring these up because these accounts will not need to be uploaded because they are created behind the scenes. And when we do other activities, the amounts will automatically feed to these accounts. I'll explain these in more detail when I illustrate the structure of the balance sheet. So we're back here in Excel looking at the balance sheet this time instead of the P&L. And highlighted in green, you have the three different main sections of the balance sheet, and those are assets, liabilities, and equity. There's not too many parent accounts and sub accounts on the balance sheet, so this should go through pretty quick. The ones highlighted in blue are the auto accounts that we will not need to upload, but as you can tell, if we look, if we go back to the profit and loss statement, you'll notice that all the accounts have a numbering, a number in front of it. This numbering system is a way to categorize expenses um, on the P&L and also accounts on the balance sheet. And you'll see that there's a there's a consistent flow for the numbering system that when we start at the balance sheet, all of your current assets start with um, one, or all your assets for that fact start with one. Your liabilities start with two. And as your equity also starts with two. And then when we go to the P&L, you're going to have all your sales or revenue are going to be start with four. Your cost of sales start with five, expenses six, and so on. So if you need to add accounts, you can always add them in here. And I'll explain adding accounts in a moment when we talk further about the balance sheet. So under assets, we're going to have current assets, and this is where we're going to put our main bank accounts and everything. Um, and just to give you a good best practice as business owners, it's very important to have your own bank account for your business. That way you're not commingling funds. So undeposited funds, we will not need to create uh, or upload, but we will just have to renumber it to this numbering system. Fixed assets, you're gonna have, we're gonna have one for land, building, equipment, furniture, and fixtures, and vehicles. And we'll also have the accumulated depreciation accounts that are associated with those fixed assets with the exception of land, because land does not depreciate. Um, so from here, the only um, parent account, sub account relationship that we have on the asset section is going to be, going to be for prepaid expenses. And I did this to break out some of the common prepaid expenses that a business may have. And that includes prepaid insurance and prepaid rent. When you pay for your insurance policies, um, you pay for them at the beginning of the year and it's for an entire 12 month period. And under an accrual basis accounting, you want to place that one bill when you pay it in the beginning of the year into a balance sheet account called prepaid insurance and then what you would do is make a journal entry in the subsequent months leading up to the end of the policy date and then that way you can recognize a portion of the expense and spread it out over the time frame of what that policy is for. So moving on to liabilities we are going to have short-term and long-term liabilities this is where you would have any kind of loans or notes that you have for your for your business, you would place them in here. And I have, you know, notes payable one, two, and three. What I would do is when you actually, if you do actually have a loan, just replace the number one with the bank that it's held at or the person that loaned you that money. That way you know where that money needs to be paid to. Wage payable, interest payable, um, the long term. It's the same thing. This is the loans or the note that you took out for your business that isn't expected to be paid until 12 months out. The equity section. This is the other part where we're going to have a parent sub account relationship. The owner's equity is going to be the parent account. And then what I would do is for me, I would say that if I was a one person sole proprietor, um, under the owner's equity section, I would replace the number one with my name. So it would be owner's equity, Robert Pipus. That's the parent account. And then owner's contribution is the money that I'm putting, that I initially put in to the business. 
So it would be owner's contribution, Robert Pipus as a subaccount, and that would roll up into the owner's equity section right above it. Then we are going to have an owner's withdrawal category, and this again replace a number one with your name. So when you net the contribution and the withdrawal, that equals your owner's equity. And in the case of a partnership where you have multiple owners, you would just create a whole nother section or a whole nother parent account with those sub accounts under it. So you would have owner's equity, John Smith, and John Smith contribution or owner's contribution, John Smith, owner's withdrawal, John Smith. Retained earnings is another auto account that we will not need to add, but we will have to renumber. Net income is an auto account that gets pulled from the income statement. It doesn't show up on the chart of accounts, so we don't have to worry about numbering it. That's why I have the question marks there. So now that we have gone over the profit and loss and the balance sheet and what it's, what it's going to look like in QuickBooks Online, what we need to do is actually to upload the chart of accounts into QuickBooks Online. And there's a few things that we have to do. First, we have to have the file with the with the chart of accounts on it so that we can upload it into QuickBooks Online. And then once it is imported in there, we're going to give it a high overview check. And then we're going to drill into the chart of accounts to set up the parent sub account relationships. So first, in order to upload the chart of accounts, we're going to go under the gear icon, click import data, click on accounts, and this is where you would select the file that will have the chart of accounts in it. And I will actually open up the chart of accounts and show you what it looks like. So you have the account number in column A, the account name in column B, the type of account in column C. The type of account is just saying that it's either a bank, a other current asset, a fixed asset, current liability, um, you know, income or expenses and so on. This is the labeling in QuickBooks Online for that account. And then you're going to go one step further and give it a detail type. So what kind of bank is the main account, the main account checking, it's a bank, it's a checking account. The savings account is a bank savings. Petty cash is a bank account, but it's cash on hand. So what we're going to do is actually upload that information on there. I noted these four auto accounts down here for reference, but we're not, we don't need to upload those in there. So we would actually just take that out before we upload it. I'm going to leave them in to show you an example of what happens when you need to correct an account after you upload it. So here we are back into QuickBooks Online. And what we are going to do is select the chart of accounts and hit open and hit next. The green highlight here is just saying that QuickBooks Online required field is this and what our field name is this and they all match up so everything is good and you would hit next. So here they are, it says 93 records are ready for import and all of them are here. You got the account number, you got the name of the account, you got the type and you got the detail account or detail type. And what we would do is just scroll down and if anything didn't seem right According to QuickBooks Online, they will highlight it in red, such as duplicate accounts or duplicate numbers, or they just didn't like the account type or the, um, the detail type. And that's probably the most common. So, um, like for this one, it didn't like the detail type of other miscellaneous expense. So what we're going to do is for the other expense. I know it's under the um, office and general administrative expense, so we'll click on that. And then that one's ready for import. This was actually a blank line. This was the undeposited funds auto account. And so we're actually not going to need that because you don't want to have two of them in there because one's going to be automated, one's not. 
So once everything is set up here and everything is done and there's no red marks here, you would just click import here in the bottom right. I'm not going to save it because I already uploaded it in. There's just two more steps that we have to do in order to complete the chart of accounts upload. All the accounts are in there, but what we have to do is structure the parent and sub account relationships within it, and then also take those four auto accounts and assign a number to them. So we're going to start with that one because that, that's probably the easiest. So we go to chart of accounts. And it actually looks like I already did them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take undeposited funds and we're going to clear out the number and hit save. So when you go into the chart of accounts, you're going to have the number, the account, the type, the detail, and this shows you the balance in the account. The four auto accounts that we're not going to import but we did need to renumber are going to be accounts receivable and you'll see here that I already numbered it. Um, or accounts receivable, we're going to look for accounts payable. Uh, where is accounts payable? There's accounts payable and then the other ones are going to be down towards the equity section. We're going to have Retained earnings is the other one. And the last one, so you got accounts receivable, retained earnings, accounts payable, and the other one is going to be the undeposited fund. So in order to re renumber an account that doesn't have one, you would click on the arrow over here associated with that account and click edit. And for the undeposited funds account we want the number to be 12,000 so we we'll go back into QuickBooks Online go to the number and type in 12,000 and hit save and close and now undeposited funds is up there towards the top with the number and with the other number accounts so the next thing that we have to do is create the relationship between the parent and the sub accounts. I will do the one on the balance sheet for prepaid expenses. So as you, if we go back to the balance sheet here, the parent account is going to be prepaid expenses and the two sub accounts under it are going to be prepaid insurance and prepaid rent. So in order for the prepaid insurance and the prepaid rent to be the sub accounts of the prepaid expense account, what we're going to do is go into the sub accounts. So prepaid insurance, we'll edit, and we'll get, we're going to click this button for is sub account. And what we're going to do is type in the 15300 for the main parent account. So it's prepaid expenses, and you would hit save. And when we go back to the, when the chart of accounts refreshes, you'll see that the, you'll see that prepaid insurance says sub account of prepaid expenses for the one above it. So we're going to do the same thing for prepaid rent, because that is a prepaid expense as well. So we're going to click on is sub account of prepaid expenses and hit save. It's that easy. So we're going to scroll down to the next one, which is going to be the, in the equity section. So you'll see that owner's contribution number one is the sub-account of owner's equity number one. And owner's withdrawal is the sub-account of owner, owner's equity number one. So these are already both rolling up into there, but if they weren't, we would just click on the arrow over here and edit and click sub-account and owner's equity. So that actually concludes all the sub accounts on the balance sheet, but there are many on the income statement. So under, you know, the income statement, as long as you follow this rule, so we would create, we would just go into the sales revenue account for residential, edit that account, and click on the residential revenue 
account for the parent account and check that box. The parent account is actually the first number here. So 41,000 is going to be the number for residential revenue. Commercial revenue will be 42,000. Other real estate revenue will be 43,000. So you will see, we'll do, um, we'll pick one down here. We'll do the lead generation expense. So lead generation expense is the parent account, and we're going to have three sub accounts underneath the lead generation expense. So we will find that on the chart of accounts in QuickBooks Online. So here we have the lead generation expense, which is 64000 And we're going to have advertising expenses, prepaid or print and direct mail expense, and internet lead generation expense underneath the lead generation expense parent account. So we're going to have advertising expenses, parent and direct mail expense, lead internet lead generation expense, all underneath the gen, lead generation expense parent account. So we would click on the arrow and edit for advertising expenses. We would click the is sub account and we would put in the lead generation expenses a parent account and then hit save and close. And then for the print and direct mail expense, we would do the same thing. We would click is sub account and put lead generation expenses the parent account and hit save and close. And for the internet lead generation expense, we would hit the arrow edit click is sub account type in the parent account of lead generation expense so in here you will go into all the sub accounts and link it to the parent account that it needs to fall under and with that you will have everything set up in the chart of accounts in quickbooks online and ready to go to start entering in information this is the main skeletal structure of your profit and loss statement and your balance sheet. So we are almost ready to have everything set up and ready to go to start entering information in and getting your reports that you need to make the best decisions for your business. And that is how to set up the chart of accounts in QuickBooks Online. We'll set up the foundation to the reporting system that we'll have. In the next video, we're going to go over how to set up customers and listings in QuickBooks Online. This will be the framework to the framework or the foundation to setting up invoices in QuickBooks Online. If you have any questions, you can always send me an email at robert.pipus at eagleeyebookkeepingservicesllc.com or call my cell phone at area code 919-610-0192. I thank you. I hope that you learned something new today and I hope that you have a fantastic day.